What an emotional roller coaster that was. Sup. What's up guys? Trimmer here, welcome back to another video. Today, um I am gonna be real as real <laughs> That sounds really weird. I'm gonna be as real as possible, like half of me is gonna be fake. This is gonna be a real video. Um because the last few days a lot of things really clicked for me and really came into place that sort of left me kind of dazed and like emotionally taxed and I realized so many things in such a short space of time pertaining to why I <clears throat> went down the path of Mingtao and really just how much it's needed now. Now, I know people have different ideas of what MGTOW is. So many, many people think it's a hatred. It's a movement based on hatred. Many, many people think that it's a movement based on the dis... basically just despising women, that it has nefarious, even negative connotations towards it. But in the last few days, I really saw just how vulnerable I was to allowing myself to put down and let down my boundaries and to really allow myself to not so much be vulnerable, but basically be careless. And I had a crazy flashback to when I was a lot younger and I remembered in my first relationship um, just how basically thirsty I was and just how as a reflection of the non-existent life that I was living, the meaningless life that I was living, my desire and feelings towards the opposite sex would also be amplified and how I believe that there's a direct correlation between that and how to basically counter that and I think the core of any sort of personal development. And this sort of leads into what I, something else I'm going to talk about, and that is not giving a fuck. Now, that, people think that not giving a fuck is cool, yeah, it's great, it's something to aspire to, and they attempt to not give a fuck. Like, in this situation, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give a fuck. And it makes no sense. Why do I say that? Because I believe that the only way to not give a fuck is to love yourself so much that everything else becomes meaningless. To be so sure of yourself that everything becomes meaningless. Everything else becomes potentially meaningless. And again, the only way to really do that is to come to a level of understanding and peace with yourself and stop the negative self-talk and stop beating yourself down and really see yourself as the most valuable asset in the world. Only by doing that can you really, quote unquote, not give a fuck. And I don't deceive myself into saying that I don't give a fuck. I used to, when I was a lot younger, I used to be like, oh, look at me. But I realized that no, like, I'm full of holes. And that really came through to me in the last few days. Um, basically, a couple of girls I was chatting to, one of them I caught a bit of feelings to. And uh, now, you know, she can't basically come to this country and something happened to me that I've not felt in a long period of time I just felt sad which fair enough like you know you've been chatting for a long period of time boys chatting whatever the fuck and all of a sudden she can't come over but for a period of time I felt sad and that shocked me for some reason that really shocked me the idea that I could feel sadness or remorse for someone who I've never met in person a video called blah 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 it's not really the same obviously but the idea that I could feel those emotions for someone who isn't even in my immediate vicinity immediately sent me into like a bit of a shock like why the f fuck do I feel this way and how screw it inefficient it was to carry on those feelings and how easily I allowed myself to get back into it because this is this is a pretty much a new experience for me as well with the whole quarantine thing I never used to do online dating 
I am far prefer just going out and meeting people. But my one of my weaknesses is that I have to watch how quickly I will catch feelings. Because men in general, they're, you know, people often think women are romantic. I've said this before. Men are actually, I believe, more more romantic than women. And if you look at all the, yes, I know, like, um, what's that very popular novel? Was written by a woman. You know what I'm talking about. Fifty Shades of Grey, written by a woman. Oh, so romantic, whatever the fuck. Nah, men are the men are the ones who are the most romantic. It may not always be the in a positive way. But women's sexuality primarily is up here. Men's is primarily hit <laughs> from the neck down. And also, you know, through the mind as well. And when I thought about all the different allegories and tales about how women of the, could, uh, women of the downfall of man, basically, one of the root meanings, you know, if you take woman, you say, woe of man, the woe of man. Now, this isn't to be, again, misogynistic. I think this is, a lot of those lessons and allegories were basically to say that a man's progress, for a man to be truly successful, he has to be on alert for the treacheries of women. Treacheries is the wrong word. For the influence, I'd say. For the influence. Because if he doesn't understand that, or if he doesn't underestimate, if he underestimates that, he will be led down a rabbit hole of sabotaging himself, of breaking down his boundaries, and of ultimately sacrificing the most important thing in his world, that is himself and his goals. And for the briefest period, I experienced really just a taste, and then it just expanded into, oh my God, like, this is why you go to Migdal. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that I should be stoic and feel nothing. No, I mean, I'm, I'm a human being. Of course, I'm going to feel something. But it was just the circumstance and how I felt and how I haven't felt that in such a long time that really just kind of took me, kind of took me back. And again, I'm thinking back to when you have something going for you, when you're really living your highest goal, everything goes off to the side. But when you sit there and you think, if I have this thing, then everything will be better. No different from thinking about money. If only I had more money. If only I had more charm. If only I had, had, had better looks. If only I had blah, 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 blah. Just passing off all responsibility and putting off everything that you say that you are going to achieve in life. Putting all of that off. And then just leaving it to rot. So you can chase ass. It's like, it's no different from any sort of addiction, really. It really is. It really isn't. And it really just struck me just how much... Because you can live and die without caring about this shit. You can live, you can die, you can get married, you can, you can do whatever the fuck you want. But I really believe that there's a reason why some of the most successful in Badsons and one of the most successful people are just single. You know what I mean? They're just single. And I mean, again, there's no... There's not saying that if you are in a relationship, if you are married, you can't be super successful. But especially in our culture, the devolution of masculinity has reached the point now where men have to be, like MGTOW, quite frankly, I believe, needs to be taught in schools. You know what I mean? Like with all this feminist crap, men who already naturally have a scarcity mentality and already naturally will be like, when they find someone who they really click with, they're naturally inclined to hold on to it, especially in this day and age, with all the social media, with all the dating apps where she don't like you, she finds someone else in two seconds. So of course you're gonna have a scarcity mentality. And that's drilled into us so much that we will sacrifice our own integrity just to get someone. We'll, we will forget about the long term. We'll forget that we'll have another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years left on the planet. We'll forget about all that. We'll put all that to the side and we'll focus specifically on that, on just getting just compromising so many of our goals. Now, I'm not saying that I, again, I didn't compromise anything, really. I lived my normal life. I kept on going normally. Everything was the same. But I was just struck at how strong that emotion was and how almost foreign it was. Because the problem is, when you go through hookups and when you go through one night stands or even like week two, maybe a month or two long relationships, it's very easy to break off pretty quickly, at least for me anyway. Like, it, it, it takes me, like, 
probably a week depending on how long I've been with someone to actually get over them and that's not so much like oh, all the emotions are gone because in my process it's like you feel something you can't do anything about it and then, then just coming to peace with that the emotion may or may not still be there but I'm doing something else so who cares you know what I mean I'm not sitting and sitting and you know moping about it and you know feeling feeling you know feeling bad for myself or or whatever you know what I mean um but yeah <laughs> but yeah but yeah it was it was absolutely surreal it was absolutely surreal and um it really did remind me of that saying again like bitches and shit you know what I mean like bitches and shit and once you get to that level in your life whereby bitches and shit and you freaking mean it you're not just telling yourself that like 99% of guys out there yeah I, I I don't give a fuck bitches and shit and then like the person they're into says bye and then all of a sudden they just devolve into a gibbering mess you know what I mean no 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 this is why you go MGTOW to build up that core the same core that is the roots of stoicism where you're a an island in a sea of chaos unmoving when the whole world is moving around you you're set i believe that's the reason why some people go MGTOW now unfortunately most people that go MGTOW don't give a shit about that they have a big pride boner and they love watching freaking sandman videos over and over again just to feel good about themselves because they're just too cowardly to actually go out and get a you know interact with the opposite sex like look at me I, someone dunked me when i was 17 and now i hate women it's like yeah no i'm not saying most MGTOW people are like that but goddamn like any movement it has its flaws but at the core of it i believe it's something that men have known for centuries is that if you're not on your path and if you're not set you will be led astray like that and most of the time you won't even know you think oh she loves me or like oh my whole family approves of her oh i better impress the village and then all of a sudden you're left with nothing you're sleeping in your car you, you take your own freaking life should be mandatory in schools, really. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna say for today, guys. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't actually do a video yesterday because I'm at a flatland, and flatlands are incredibly boring. So I think I'm just gonna be talking about men's issues, and I might do like current common topics or like stuff that's going on related to men's issues as well. Um, now that I finally got a bit of a day off, uh, a few days off next, I can actually focus on that. But anyway, that's all I'm gonna say for today, guys. Spin the wheel of online dating. Bye. How many other people do I've got like three other bitches I can talk to? Bitches ain't shit, man. Peace.